Hey guys, GP Jesus here. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know for externalities, including the definition, the various types, appropriate government action, the examples, and the GPA Jesus strategy used to answer these types of problems. So first, what is an externality? According to Investopedia, an externality is a quote-unquote cost or benefit incurred by a third party. So this is your impact, and it can either be positive or negative otherwise known as a positive externality or a negative externality. Let's take a factory polluting the air people breathe in as an externality. This is a negative externality, as the people there have nothing to do with the production of the good, yet they still incur a cost to their health. This means that the firm is not paying for all of its costs. This results in market failure where the free market is currently inefficient. Remember that the socially optimal point is where marginal social benefit equals marginal social costs. And if we look at this diagram here, which displays a negative externality in production of a good, the result of this market failure is inefficiency, deadweight loss. So why is this? This is the socially optimal point where MSB equals MSC. And this is the quantity and this is the price that you want to get. But currently, the market quantity is left to the socially optimal quantity. And we want to go towards the socially optimal quantity, as we currently have deadweight loss, and us economists dislike deadweight loss. So we need a way to fix this. One way is for a government to step in and tax this firm to reduce the incentive for this goods production. And by using an appropriate tax, the firm can then start paying the entire social cost of their actions. This is essentially what the entire externality unit revolves around. Let's start digging into the different types of externalities. So we first have a positive externality in consumption. Since it's in consumption, we, not, we have two demand curves or two marginal benefit curves. A positive externality is created from spillover benefits, meaning that society as a whole is benefiting more than the firm. Although this may sound like a good thing, this actually isn't, as we, we then get an issue of underproduction, where not enough of the good is being produced. As since we can see from the diagram, with marginal social benefit being larger than marginal private benefit. So as we can see here from our, our socially optimal quantity, where MSB equals MSC, our socially optimal quantity is to the right of market quantity. And we currently have an underproduction. So what we want to do is increase production and get our quantity closer to the socially optimal to increase efficiency. As we've learned in previous units, we can do this by giving the firm a, a per unit subsidy. This will help incentivize the firms to centrally keep doing what they're doing and produce more of this of this good that's benefiting society a lot. So a short acronym you can use for positive externalities and consumption is this called PED, which I took from a Barron's AP Microeconomics book you should definitely get. This essentially means positive externality demand. Positive externalities have two demand curves, as we can see here. Some examples of positive externalities in real life is colleges or vaccines. Colleges for education and vaccines for healthcare, which both of these help produce more healthy and productive citizens. We're also less likely to commit crime and do stupid things and are essentially just better citizens. So it's a win-win for both the government and the people. Let's move on to negative externalities, which there are two types of. One is production of a good and the other is consumption of a good. So the first one we have for production of a good is where we have two marginal cost curves, where marginal social cost is higher than marginal private cost. We've already covered this one earlier, where it's essentially the cost to society from the production of the good is greater than the cost of the firm. So the firm is not paying all of their costs so that they can produce less, and also to raise the firm's cost so that they can fully pay for what they've done. A main example you'll see is factory pollution, just as I mentioned. Really any firm that has spillover costs during production will fall under this category. And an acronym, let's just say N-E-P-S, NIPS. So finally, we have a negative externality in consumption, where we have two marginal benefit curves, marginal private benefit and marginal social benefit, where the private benefit is larger than the social benefit. This refers to the consumer, as we say consumption, where a person's personal benefit is greater than society's benefit. A great example of this is cigarettes, where someone has to huff in all of the smoke that you create for your own pleasure. And others playing loud music at night as you're disturbing other neighbors sleep for your own benefit. The government can do a lot to fix this, again by taxing the good or consumers for purchasing it, imposing restrictions, creating propaganda such as how on all those boxes they say smoking kills, and then they have like some disturbing photo that will like traumatize you for the rest of your life. And the last thing they can do is just straight up outright ban the good from the market. So now that we know about externalities, let's go through the GP Jesus strategy for handling 
handling externality questions, which which I'll definitely create a practice video in the future for. So the first step we want to take when approached with an externality type question is identify the type of externality we have. For this example, we'll try a negative externality in consumption using the same graph from the example earlier. We want to then label the socially optimal point, which is where MSC meets MSB, which is right here, already labeled. Now we have to do the typical econ labels of your quantities, your prices, your title, and you have already done all of that. So here's where it gets much more complicated. So one easy way to approach dead weight loss is going from your market quantity, which is where you're starting from, because this is inefficient. You go all the way to your current market equilibrium before the government action, and then create this triangle right here, which is dead weight loss. Note that dead weight loss is typically an arrow that always points to the socially optimal point. As we can see, this is basically an arrow. As we can see, this is basically an arrow that's always pointing to the socially optimal point. You have to remember this so that you don't confuse it. If you accidentally choose the socially optimal quantity, you go up and then you fill in this triangle as, as this place is very common to make mistakes on. So dead weight loss always points to the, towards the socially optimal point. So the next set of instructions are for drawing the tax we need to impose on this firm, which we can go from the socially optimal price switch here all the way to the socially optimal point then go all the way up to our private marginal private benefit curve and heading left to the y-axis and then label this with the appropriate government action which since this is a negative externality we're going to tax it to decrease the consumption of the good and if your teacher also requires it we can label the marginal external benefit which is just in between the societal and private curves which we'll call meb and then voila we're done so in summary externality is the cost or benefit on a third party you must also remember the socially optimal point that we learned from previous units of MSC equals MSB. Uh, negative externality is the result of spillover costs, while positive externality is the result of spillover benefits. And here are some of the appropriate government action for the different scenarios you encounter. First is a positive externality in consumption, where we're going to subsidize the firm to keep doing what it's doing. Then we have a negative externality in production, and we're going to tax the firm so that's paying all of its costs. And finally, we have a negative externality in consumption. We're going to tax the firm to decrease the consumption of this horrendous good. And you have to remember, dead weight loss points to the optimal point. So many people make the mistake of drawing the wrong arrow. I'm GP Jesus. Hope this video helped. Um, I died for your grades. I was meant to be a thumbs up. I'm sorry that you had to see that.